Hey, how's it going guys? This is Dave 2D and this is my review of the Lenovo Y700. So this model comes in three different screen sizes, a 14 inch, a 15 inch, and a 17 inch. The 15 and 17 inch both are equipped with Skylake Core i7s and they both have GTX 960 M's. And that's a loadout that's been reviewed multiple times on this channel. Like a lot of gaming laptops right now have that exact same specification and very similar performance. But what caught my interest was that 14 inch model. It's an $800 gaming laptop that's thinner and lighter than your average gaming laptop. Let's take a look. Okay, inside the box, there's lots of padding. You get the laptop, the AC adapter, and some pamphlets. The top is a textured plastic finish that looks a little bit like carbon fiber. You have to tilt it to see the weave. It's pretty subtle. And for fake carbon fiber, I think they did a good job. The bottom is the same material, plastic with a carbon fiber look. There's a big air intake here, and if you remove the screws, you can access the internals. Inside, you have two RAM slots that you can upgrade. They give you an eight gig stick, so you only have to buy a second stick to hit 16 gigs. You can replace the hard drive if you want, and there's even an M2 SATA socket. The device is relatively light for a gaming laptop. It comes in at 4.8 pounds, and it's also pretty thin. For ports, on the left we have a power socket, USB 2 port, audio jack and a system restore button. And on the right, we have a deep SD card slot, a pair of USB 3 ports, full size HDMI port and an ethernet jack. On the back, there's some red grill looking things which I thought were kind of cool, but when you pop off that cover, it's just for design. There's nothing special in here. It's just a hinge. The build quality of the hinge is pretty good. The mechanism feels nice and solid. The screen has a little bit of flex to it. It's nothing too bad. And the keyboard area feels well made. It's nice and rigid as well. I'm not a big fan of the screen hinges being close together like this. Like you can put some unwanted force on the hinge every time you open it, but the build quality is good. So it's probably not an issue. This is the base model 14 inch. So it has a core i7 running at 2.6 gigahertz, a 14 inch 1080p screen, AMD M375 graphics chip, eight gigs of RAM, 500 gigs of storage, and it goes for $800 US. The inside has a brushed metal surface that actually feels pretty premium. Now, Lenovo usually makes really good keyboards. This isn't the best one I've used from them, but it's pretty solid. The key travel feels good and it's backlit with red lighting. I have the international keyboard here, so the layout around the enter key is a little bit weird, but I've been told that the US keyboard has a normal shaped enter key. The trackpad is okay. The surface is a little too smooth for me, but I like the tracking. It doesn't skip around, which is really important to me, but the buttons are very stiff. If you're a tap to click person, it won't bother you, but if you like to click with the physical buttons, you're gonna need to press them pretty hard. The JBL branded speakers are up at the top of the keyboard here underneath these red grills. The bass is pretty weak, but the mids and higher frequencies sound good at moderate volumes, but they start to distort pretty quickly if you crank it up too loud. The screen is a 14 inch IPS panel running at 1920 by 1080. It gets reasonably bright with decent viewing angles and the contrast is pretty good. But if you need a color accurate image for web or for print work, you'll need an external monitor. The drive that they include is a 5400 RPM drive, so drive speeds are gonna be slow. It doesn't affect frame rates in games, but I would highly recommend upgrading this drive yourself if it fits your budget. Okay, in terms of gaming, on paper and with benchmarks, the AMD video card is like 10 to 20% slower than a 960M, depending on the benchmark. Now, after playing a ton of games on this thing, the performance difference really depends on the type of game you wanna play. So light games will still break 60 frames per second at 1080p, even with all the graphics turned up. You're getting lower frame rates than a 960M, but it's still above 60 frames per second. More demanding games like Fallout 4 and Rainbow Six Siege, these games have a noticeable hit in performance. If you wanna hit 60 frames per second, you'll have to lower the graphics down. And even on medium graphics in Rainbow Six, once in a while, it'll drop into the 50s. So this is more than good enough for me, but depending on how like MLG you are, it might not fit your needs. The most surprising numbers actually came from really demanding open world games like Witcher 3. They'll be around 35, 40 frames per second at 1080p. If you lower the resolution, you obviously get better frame rates. The system is pretty quiet overall. It idles at around 25 decibels because of that mechanical drive. And when it's under load, it's in the high 30s. Thermally, it also seems properly cooled. There's two fans in there and it never goes too far above 100 Fahrenheit. It's still comfortable to use. The AC adapter is 135 watts and it charges a pretty small battery inside there. It's a 45 watt hour battery and it charges fast. So a full charge takes less than an hour. The battery life is pretty short. So regular use with screen at around 75% brightness, I was able to get just over three and a half hours and playing games, I got less than an hour. Now granted, it is a small laptop with a small battery and it's got a dedicated graphics card. So you kind of expect it to have short battery life. That's just the laws of physics. Okay, with the 14 inch Lenovo Y700, you get a light laptop made with a mix of plastic and metals 
with good build quality. The 14 inch screen gets reasonably bright, but it has poor color accuracy. The keyboard is comfortable to use and the trackpad has good tracking, but it has very stiff buttons. On the inside, the Skylake Core i7 is an established processing beast. The AMD M375 graphics chip isn't as powerful as a 960M, but it's still respectable and it can play most current titles. The eight gigs of RAM and the hard drive are both upgradable and there's an M2 SATA socket in there if you want a second storage drive. And lastly, there's a 45 watt hour battery that lasts about three and a half hours of regular use. Okay, so the AMD chip that's inside this thing is a decent performer, but it's not as powerful as a 960M. So if you're looking for like the best value, best bang for your buck gaming performance, this won't be it. You can get a 15 inch gaming laptop for 800 bucks and it will have a 960M. So like a Dell Inspiron 7559 or maybe the 15 inch version of this when it's on sale. But if you're looking for a gaming laptop that's still really portable and powerful, this is one of very few options. And this is actually a pretty good choice. And the best thing about it all is that Lenovo has really big sales once in a while. And you could probably get this thing for like 650, maybe even $700 when it's on a big sale. That's the end of this review. Hope you guys liked it. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. It's been nice. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.